All right, so here we go. So the first thing I'm going to work with yeah, how funny, is k tan squared x times 3 equals 0. So when you're solving these, you're being asked to solve these. Okay, first thing that you need to check for is you need to check, hey, is this all in terms of one trig function? And your answer right now should be yes. It's all one trig function. It's all tan. All right. So it's all tangent. So yes, I've done that. Check. Next thing to do is to, well, since it's all one, now I pick a letter. Pick your letter of poison. P wins. So I'm going to say P is equal to tan X. And then I say I'm going to replace P with or tan x of p, so now I have p squared minus the 3 is equal to 0. Next is solve for p. That's algebra 2. Add 3 to both sides, take the square root. So I get p is equal to square root of 3. One of the things I even forgot when I first did this problem is what's supposed to go here? Plus minus. Thank you, sir. The important part of the plus or minus is because it, I plus the square root of 3 or minus the square root of 3 when I square it, the worst. So realistically, I've got two solutions. I have P is equal to the positive square root of 3, or P is equal to the negative square root of 3. Help myself out. Take 3. All right, so your tangent of X is equal to square root of 3, or tangent of X is equal to negative square root of 3. And now I go and take a look at my unit circle. Well, where does that happen? You realize it doesn't tell me because I don't have sine. All I have are sines or cosines. And that's because I realized that, hey, tangent of sine of a cosine, you want that to be equal to square root of 3. Where does that happen? I'm going to take a guess. I think it's going to happen at pi over 6, I don't know, pi over 6, pi over 3 because sine is the square root of 3 over 2, and cosine is 1 half. So when that happens, so when x is equal to pi over 6, or pi over 3, excuse me, I get sine is the square root of 3 over 2, cosine is 1 half, square root of 3 over 2, times 2 over 1. Hey, that does equal square root of 3. So yes, pi over 3 is my winner. I had to check it to make sure it worked. So that's the winner for that one. How did I guess it? How did I check? So I took pi over 3 in for x, and I find out where sine of pi over 3 is. I look at my unit circle. Sine of pi over 3, so it's the y-coordinate. Sine of pi over 3 is the y-coordinate square root of 3 over 2. So I put square root of 3 over 2 here. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And then I change, I don't like division, so I change division to multiplication, right? Keep, change, flip. So here's the keep. There's the change, multiply, flip it. And then I get, hey, it does equal square root of 3. So my check did work. So it is pi over 3 for this one. So for this next one, I don't have to check it because now I know it's the pi over 3s. So where is it negative? Where is tangent negative? We're at 2 pi over 3. Because it's the exact same coordinates except one of them is negative. Okay. X is equal to 2 pi over 3 for that one. And those are my two solutions. Okay. So that's one of them I'm going to do. The next one that I'm going to do for you guys is the last one. No, no, no. I'm going to do the second one. Uh, Back to page three, where it starts two sine squared. Okay. So this one says two sine squared x plus sine x minus a one equals zero. Okay. X and zero is two pi. So our first thing, our first check, was we're asked to solve for x. Hey. Is everything in terms of one thing, one 
trick punch. Yes, sign, sign, everywhere, sign, sign. Air sign, everywhere, signs. Okay. Next, so I go, huh, so everything's there, so now I pick a letter. Letter? L. L is my letter, and L is going to stand for sine of x. I plug everything in. So this is 2L squared plus an L minus a 1 equals a 0. So now we're back again to algebra 2. We're asked to factor. This is for that whole 0 thing. How much factor? So I get. an L, so it's going to be plus 1 there, minus 1 here, equals 0. So on this one, that means that L is going to be equal to a positive 1 half, or on this side, L is going to be equal to a negative 1. Do I want L? No, I don't want L. I want X. But, so I replace. So whatever was L, now it's going to become sine. So now this is saying that sine of x is equal to a 1 half. And sine of x is equal to a negative 1. Notice on this one here, x is in between from 0 to 2 pi. So that's the whole circle. So again, I'm going to be asking myself, hey, so where is sine equal to a 1 half? First place I see it is pi over 6. Is there anywhere else that I see it? 5 pi over 6, right there. So here we have x is equal to pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Last one here says, okay, so where is x equal to negative 1? Where is sine of x equal to negative 1? <laughs> 3 pi over 2. x is equal to 3 pi. Next one's going to be law of sines, law of cosines. I want to do one of those. Let's do, let me go find that first. Let's go, yep, there it is. Law of sines, law of cos. This is also has bearings. So the one we're going to go to next is the one that says an aeroplane flying. It's a word problem. Okay, it says an aeroplane flying. Yes, you can see an aeroplane. Okay, it's the British version of aeroplane. All right, so then I come over here and I'm gonna say this is an, an aeroplane is flying to Edinburgh, is a thousand kilometers due south. So you guys already have the picture in there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly make it. Here's my plane flying to Edinburgh, 100 kilometers due south. All right, they tell us here that there is some fog someplace between here and Edinburgh, and they asked the plane to go and to take a bearing of 320. So here is my bearing of 320 degrees. So 320 degrees. Takes his new bearing, and now he's being asked to go to Preston. Oh, there he goes to play. I'll make that aeroplane be an A now. Okay, so it's Preswick. Okay, Preswick, and then they say that the bearing of Preswick from Edinburgh, they give me this information too. If I go this way, is 240 degrees. Ask us how far first find the distance of the aeroplane from Preswick. 
press list, excuse me, because they're asking us for this. And then they say for part B is find the bearing <coughs> of Edinburgh from Presley. So when I find the bearing from Edinburgh to Presley, no, of Edinburgh from Presley. So they want you to do the bearing this way. So again, with the bearing, I put my little due north symbol. They want the bearings because they want this. That's for part B. Let's work out these problems that they're asking us to find. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to do so I see a triangle. So if I see a triangle, I want to start trying to find some angles and some other things. So give me some angles, but not in the triangle. What I can deduce is that there, in a whole circle, there's 360 degrees. So what's left over for here? So that one's 40. Also kind of a nice thing, they tell me that this one whole thing here is 240, but they tell me that this line is due south. So if I went from here to here, how many degrees is from here to here? 180, so what do I have left over? 240 minus the 180, 60 degrees for that piece right there. Finally, <coughs> excuse me, if this is 40, and this is 60, and I have a triangle set up here. This one is the 80 that's left over to add up the total of 180 on the inside of a triangle. So, say again? Oh, the bearing one. We'll get to that one in a second. So, because first of all, I want to do this part A where they ask me about this one over here. They ask me, they ask me for the. Heck, the distance from Presley to Edinburgh. And I have to start thinking, hey, I have two things to help me find out. I have a law of sines choice and a law of cosines choice. The way that you're going to make a choice of which one to use is if you have a pair where you have opposite of opposite one angle on one side, they're opposite of each other, like this 80 and 100 here you, that you know, you probably need to use law of sines. That's what's got to be in your, that, that, that answer to your question has got to be in your head. The question is, what parts do I have? And you notice, hey, I've got something across from this, law of sine. So that means I'm going to use sine of 80 degrees over 100 is equal to sine of 60 over x. And you go out and get your magic calculator. And your magic calculator would come out and tell you that X is 87.93 kilometers. I mean, even circle. All right. So the last part is part B. Is they're asking us here, they're asking us to find Y. Okay, this angle that's up here. So this is where you have to break out the old geometry. Your old geometry, right, tells us that, hey, this right here, is a parallel angle. Yeah, your parallel lines. This one right here is giving is your transversal. Your transversal is being cut. These opposite angles here are going to be the same. So y is equal to 60. And therefore, your bearing that they're looking for, the bearing, is not just 60, but 0, 060 0 degrees. Cosines is very similar. The one above that, the one where it says a submarine leaves Scotland, okay, the one right over there, that is a bonus question. If you so desire to challenge yourself and go, you know what, gosh darn it, I really like math. I really want to go for it, go for it. Enjoy that problem. Okay. I guess that's what I'm going to have. I'm going to do one more problem. The last problem I'm going to do is a graphing of a sine function. Okay, so it's on this page. Would you guys take a look? This one right here. See it? See it? See it? Got it. Okay, the one I'm going to do is number 14. Y is equal to 3.5. 
3 sine of x minus pi over 4. Yeah. So on each of these, if you guys can even take a look, I graphed each of these online. Right here, if you see it takes up a lot of room, so don't be afraid of using up the room. So when we did these, you had to come up with four things, right? You had to come up with what is A, what is B, what is C, and what is D. So this is where you need to take a look at this and refresh your brain. Which one of my numbers being shown above there is A? Three. Okay. Also, just so you know, a test may refer to A as your amplitude. Three. I know three, but what is B? One. one. It is the number in front of X that you do not see there. One. Great. What is C? Pi over, pi over four. Or is it negative pi over four? Pi over four. Pi over four. <coughs> it is the opposite. Congratulations. Thank you for remembering. Okay. And D is zero. That cannot be seen. If it cannot be seen, it is zero. And then, so the next one, then right. That's my amplitude. The other part that I need to find out is period. The sine, how do I find period? 2 pi over what? B. So in this case, it's 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. Are you okay with that? So then the last part is, how did I figure out where to start my box? C, not plus, just C, C and D, C common D, right? C common D, so C common D is pi over 4 comma 0, so I come over here, pi over 4, comma 0, so that's that dot that's right there, then where do I go up or where do I go down? I go up three, down three. My amplitude. One, two, three. One, two, three. And the parts of my box sitting there. And then how far do I move over? Period, which is two pi. Now do I move over to where it says two pi? Uh, two pi from where I started, which is two pi added to pi over four, which is two pi plus pi over four, which is, I will give you that, as being 9 pi over 4. So then I copy my dots there, 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 and I make my box. I find halfway, which in this case is going to be 5 pi over 4. And then the ultimate question is well, how does sign go? Does sign start here in the middle or does sign start on top? Sine starts in the middle, goes up, comes down, comes up. That's sine. If it was cosine, it would start here, bottom out, come up. And that's what you have to worry about. Boom, boom, boom. It goes down like this. Tangent. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about that one. Anything you worry about is sine and cosine. Let's Cosine, if I were to graph cosine, so if I had a box here for cosine. So here's my box, box, box. It starts at the starts at the top, bottoms out down here, finishes at the top. That's for y is equal to cosine of x. Okay? And that's your review of the whole semester and the weeks or less. Now the inverse trig ones, they're basic, the inverse trig ones that you have, that's one where they ask you, hey, here's this, find this. Um, you're verifying trig identities. You're going to be asked to simplify some. So I will have this big, this big thing here for you, this big black piece of paper with all that stuff that will be there for you. And then what I'm going to ask, uh, and then I'll have the trig identities put on the board for you. So that's the uh, the uh, Pythagorean identities. The only ones you're going to need to know is that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. 
Uh, tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared, and cotangent plus one is equal to cosecant squared. Okay, so those will be up on the board for you to use. Here's what we got.